Hi there. Welcome to Christmas in July at the Schwoben's Nest. My name is Sandra, and I'm so glad you're here. Today's Christmas DIYs are going to be working with clay. This is the brand I really like. I tried it. It's from Michaels. It's called Das or D-A-S, and it stays really nice and moist. It's wonderful to work with and I always make sure when I take it out of the package that I close the package up again and then put it back in a Ziploc bag so it's an airtight seal. If you've been watching my channel you know that a while ago I did break down and purchase these molds from IOD. It is the vintage market mold and it has the cow, the sheep, and the pig. Those are the ones I wanted. I probably won't be purchasing any other molds because I really don't think I would be using them often enough. I'm taking some cornstarch and just putting it in all the nooks and crannies with a little paintbrush and then it will be ready to get the clay. I like to work with the clay and kind of make it flat and try and get it as big as the mold that I'm putting it in. This one I didn't do but that's okay. You can just pull off other pieces of clay and then join them together. It is better if you can do a large piece all at once because you do get some joints I would guess you could call them showing from the front. When you pull off a piece like this and then just add it to the other one, sometimes you get a little bit of a crease in the front. What I really love about these IOD molds is that they're super easy to work with and they have that little micro rim. That's what they call it. And it's really easy to take the clay off the edge like I'm doing here. I got this clay from Michaels. I think you can get it on Amazon. If I can find a link, I'll have that down in my description box. I don't think I'll use any other clay. I'm really happy with the results of this one and how it works. I have found the easiest way to release these molds is just to turn it upside down and kind of peel it back very slowly and gently and everything just comes right out beautifully. Take a look at that cow. It's perfect. I'm so excited. I use weld bond glue and my finger to apply the glue all over the back of the clay mold. What I'm going to be doing is gluing this right into this artist panel that I've got backwards so you can have a little bit of a frame on it. I painted that white a while ago and just had it sitting in my stash so I figured I'm going to use it for this project. Once I get the glue all over the cow I'm just going to lay it very gently right in the center of the frame. Once it's there, I just like to adjust everything the way it should be. I just press it very gently. Sometimes the little legs get a little askew, so I just go ahead and fix those up, straighten them out. And then using my finger, I very gently press along the edges, making sure that everything is adhered to my project. I also did the sheep and the pig and for these two I'm going to be putting them on the front side of an artist's panel. These are a little bit smaller than the one I had with the cow because I wanted to have a little bit of a different look to them. The same mold as the pig and the cow and the sheep has these little floral pieces and it also has some wheat sheaves. I decided to do these little floral pieces and then glue them right on top of each of the animals, sort of like a halter or draped over their shoulders, just to make it look like they were dressed up for Christmas. Again, I'm using weld bond glue to attach them, and I'm very gently going to be pressing it all into place, making sure that it forms around the shape of the animal. All of the clay pieces have dried overnight a good 24 hours and what I'm doing now is just taking a tiny little brush I'm going to make the flowers into poinsettias and I'm going to use some hunter green for the leaves I want this to look really Christmassy and I think it turned out pretty nice I know these flowers aren't poinsettias but I just did my best to make them look like that I used antique wax to paint the bow that was towards the top of the little wreath. 
For the inside of the flowers, I decided to paint them black because I'm pretty sure that poinsettias have somewhat of a black interior. They turned out pretty nice. These artist panels were still natural wood, so I'm just taking some of my sheepskin chalk paint and painting the animal along with the front and sides of each panel. I printed off some images just on regular printer paper using my inkjet printer. I found all of the images on Pixabay and I just printed them as full sheets because I knew I wanted to use them as backgrounds. I'm going to be trimming some of the images that I want to use and then I'm going to Mod Podge them to the top and bottom of each of the panels. The edge that was going to be nearest the clay animal, I wanted that to be really rough and ragged. So I'm just taking a paintbrush with some regular water. This is just the paint water that I use to clean my brushes. And I'm just going to moisten all of the edge and then just literally pick it off. And it comes off really easily once you just give it a second to get nice and wet. I'm using Mod Podge and I'm just going to get all of the area underneath the little piggy where I want to put my image. Once I get it on, I'm just going to smooth it out as best I can and then add another layer of Mod Podge on top. I'll do the exact same process for a section on the top. I'm not going to worry about the sides. I just thought I would just leave those blank, just have a top and bottom border. I think if I did this project again, I would probably glue the paper onto the panel first, covering the whole thing and wrapping it around the sides, then gluing my clay image on top of it. I think that would have looked really nice as well. So if you try this project and you do it that way, send me a photo, I'd love to see it. Once the Mod Podge had a chance to set a little bit but was still wet, I pulled off the edges of the paper. This actually looked really neat as well because it gave each of the edges a little bit more of a rough look. It pulled off some of the paper on top of the panel, but I was okay with that because you guys all know I love things looking rustic. For the cow, I did things a little bit differently because I had an actual frame. So I'm just trimming off little pieces of the paper where I want it to be. So for at this little edge, I've got some holly leaves and some berries. And I'm doing the same thing, just tearing the little ends, making sure that it looks nice and rustic and using Mod Podge to apply it. I wanted the inside of this frame to look kind of similar to the other ones that I did. So I decided to grab some of the wording. I think on the top here it says Christmas and on the bottom it's going to have a vintage Santa. I just tore off the pieces very gently and again just applying them with Mod Podge making it look like some of the paper had just torn off. Using a small chip brush and some of the antique wax I just dabbed some onto the brush and then put it off on some paper towel. And I'm just going to be doing some dry brushing all around the frame, on the inside, on the sides, and then I'm also gonna run my brush over the clay images. And this is just going to, again, give it more of a old vintage look. I'm working at my cottage this week, and so it was really easy to go outside and just trim some pine branches and some cedar branches, and I'm going to be able to add some really beautiful embellishments to all of these frames. I'm starting off with a little bit of cedar in the center, then I'm going to add some little pine stems, and then I've got some beads that I'm going to use, and some red pit berries, and a couple of pine cones. So for this one on the cow, I'm going to do everything in the corner, and for the others, I'm going to put them right on top in the center. Once I was done adding all the berries and greenery, I thought it needed a little bow. So I did add a little double loop bow to each of these projects and I think they turned out absolutely beautiful. You'll have to let me know what you think.
I had a little bit of clay left over, so I decided to go ahead and make some tiny little ornaments that I'm going to use on a berry garland. I'm just going to flatten this out, and then I'm just going to use a regular knife to cut out the shape of a stocking. I'm just going to use my fingers to round out the corners and make them nice and smooth. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. If you like what you see, I have lots more in store for you. So hit that red button and stick around a while. To make the little stocking look a little bit more three-dimensional, I'm just squishing out a little sausage piece, sort of, and I'm going to use that as the little fluff at the top of the stocking. And I'm just going to place it right on top of the stocking itself and then just blend in the edges so they connect with the clay piece on the bottom. You don't have to glue this clay together. You can just kind of mold everything together as one piece. Next, I made three little Christmas trees just using a regular triangle as the shape of a little pine tree and then cutting out a tree trunk. The last little guy that I made was a little hat. So this was a little different than the others, but I'll just show you really quickly how I made that. I just kind of used my knife to round out the top and then I added a little fluff at the bottom and a little ball on the top. And I think these turned out really sweet. With this type of shape, you could also make this into a bell. I gave the stockings two coats of red paint, the Christmas trees two coats of green paint, and then I used antique wax for the trunk. And for the little snow hats, I painted them gray and left the little fluff at the bottom and their little pom-pom white. Using a small stencil brush and some white paint, I just dry brushed a little bit of snow on each of the little images. The Christmas tree, it looked really sweet on, and then I decided to just add some into the hat and the stockings as well. I have tons of this red bead garland. I picked up a huge bag a couple of years ago at the thrift store for $6. I started by keeping 12 beads as the start of my garland. Then I took two little pieces of ribbon and made them look like the tails of a bow, glued those on, and now I'm going to be adding all of my little clay ornaments. I'm going to use three beads in between. I'll alternate with two clay ornaments and then I'm going to add another pair of ribbon tails. For the ribbon tails, I cut a strand of the ribbon, but then I had to cut it in half because if I just folded it, one part of the Christmas trees would be upside down. So I split it into the center and then glued the two pieces together a little bit on an angle so they would kind of stick out. And then I added a little bit more hot glue to the top of the ribbon and folded it over the strand where the beads are. I alternated my little clay pieces, continued making the little ribbon tails, and once I ran out of my little clay pieces, I was done. I cut off the end of the garland, and I think this project turned out really cute. If you liked my video, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know you like what you're seeing and I'll do some more for you. It also gets me noticed more on YouTube, which helps my channel grow. Thanks so much for watching. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. Bye for now.